A round of applause to the Chairperson Board of Trustees Association of Private Educators in Nigeria. Thank you for being here, ma'am. Right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the founder of the college, uh, the principal, everybody, parents, teachers here present. I'm sure you will all agree with me. It's been an awesome, informative, enlightening session. When Mr. Smith approached me to give the closing remarks and we started talking about mental wellness, mental health, and I said it's the trending issue in our schools, in the society, on the social media, everywhere at the moment. And therefore I congratulate Ola Shuri, ably led by the founders, for this initiative. The time is right. The time is now. Parents, I'm sure, did not want to operate from the level of ignorance. But we've gotten a lot of information today that can equip, and I'm sure we are not living the way we came, that can equip us to at least handle some of the issues we might have been battling with. I'm going away with a lot of information, but some things that jump at me is this issue of the social media. Mrs. Coca said, embrace social media and harness the social media in the right direction. And that applies to parents, to schools, to every one of us here. As Dr. Diary ably rounded up, we are in it together. I always say school is a tripod, the parents, the school, and the students. When uh, parents apply or when students apply to our schools, one of the th information that we passionately seek, genuinely, is that if there are any issues about that child, please let us know. We are not being nosy, we are not just being inquisitive, it's because we want to be able to give that child the full 360 degree support that the child needs. And therefore my appeal as part of this concluding, uh, conclusion for today's event is that parents please be more open. Please be more open. I run a sixth form college. They are post 14. So issues have already been formed by the time they get to us. And then students join us, no uh, uh, revelation about anything, and sickle cell anemia crops up. All kinds of issues crop up, medical, mental illness. I started my school 25 years ago. We did not see, I did not know what cutting was until a few years ago when I was contacted, I had to Google to find out what cutting was. We are now seeing in the community the reflection of what was summarized by Dr. Dari. So it's economic, it's peer pressure, a lot of it though is peer pressure and curiosity. But what we are being told now is that it's better to prevent and therefore, if parents are going away with anything, please let us pay attention to this issue of preventing. I loved it when Mrs. Koka said, be a coach. Don't just give instructions. Act through the instructions with the children. Be their friends. Tell them every day you love them. Because sometimes we have students that say, my parents don't care. Oh, they won't listen to me. And let us be active listeners. As we were told, we have two ears for a purpose and a mouth. Two ears and a mouth for a purpose. Let us be listeners. I know a lot of us belong to old school, whereby, you know, this is the culture, this is the tradition, and these are the way things must be done. But these children don't belong in our own time. They are 21st century kids and they have a lot going on around them, a lot of distractions, a lot of issues. And therefore it is important that in our respective homes, a lot of children are formed before five. It doesn't mean that if your children are post five, you still cannot impact on their lives. But if you go away with nothing today, 
one of the things you must go away with is that every family must have their core values. You have your core values that you establish and you impact in your children. You discuss it, you talk about it every day, every moment you have. If you are busy, create quality time so that you can have conversations around those core values. In our family, we do not do this. In our family, we don't go into drugs. In our family, we do not do this. And that would prepare the children to be stronger individuals. Because we hear something we just heard this morning, some children are predisposed to issues of mental wealth. Why are they predisposed? What have we done with them at home that makes them predisposed? And therefore our work and the paramount work we are primary intentional parents that we must be. And the school has its own aspect as well. But in rounding up, I really again would like to appreciate this initiative. I know that we met some time ago in my association and we said that we need to see how we can support our schools. And what we said is that we must develop a mental, wealth, mental health policy for our schools that we can share amongst ourselves in order to be able to support. I will therefore ask this morning an appeal that we have a joint venture. There must be a position document that arises from today's discussions. And that we join hands and develop this mental health policy, taking into consideration parents, the schools, and the children. And if there's nothing else, because we must not, we are very, very, very good with talking in my country. We are very high. We are very eloquent. We like to talk. We like to discuss. But action is usually 10%, whilst talking is 90%. This morning I challenge that the talking should be 10% and the action should be 90%. So once again, I'd like to say a big thank you for this initiative. Please call on me, Mr. Smith. We are on the same board together as well. And we can start this movement of how we can develop this mental health policy that schools, because there's a lot, it's not that people don't want to help. It's not that people don't want to do the right things, but there's a lot of ignorance. Culturally also, we are very secretive. So we need to be able to open everything up and be able to expose and see that mental health is just like malaria. I thank you all very much. Thank you very much, Ma. Once again, round of applause to Dr. Ogunsaya. <laughs> Judging by the applause, I know the energy level is low, so on the final note, just one more time, please give her a round of applause. Um, I, I don't know whether it's this event that I'm happy about, or even more happy the fact that nobody has left the hall. I am, for me, as a compare, that is a signal to how successful an event is. No one has actually left except to use the toilets. I think there was one man that hasn't come back. <laughs> Please, can you check him in the bathroom? But thank you all for, for, for holding on and staying. We really appreciate you. We're on the final lap. And um, I just wanted to ask a quick question. How many of us grew up in a home where mom or dad said, I love you? Okay, just put your hands up. If you grew up in a home where your mom and dad regularly said, I love you. Okay, now, how many of you are now parents who didn't have that but say it now to your kids? Okay, I'm happy about that. I'm happy about that. Okay. Um, I think if we're going to take anything away now is the fact that we need to reinforce for the parents here to re and the teachers to reinforce um, the confidence level in our children and our students. It doesn't take anything away from us to say we love them. Um, I didn't understand the concept growing up as much as I do now that I'm a parent. And that's partly, largely due to my wife who, you know, just randomly just say I love you. Like, I've married you now, so like, I've given you money for food. But 
when the kids came into the picture, um, as a man that doesn't cry, I had to I had to make sure it became part of the lifestyle. And there are five. And the fact that I say that and they say that back to me, um, I think is one one of the many victories that we need to to really win as parents. So please, please, for some reason, I just thought I should throw that out there. Don't forget to say you love them. Don't forget to acknowledge them and tell them that you'll always be there for them. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, um, tell the person next to you I love you. Give them a hug. No kissing. And um, it's a great honor and privilege to introduce, um, to give the vote of thanks, the chairman, Olashere International School Board of Governors. He's a man that, um, no, I have to watch you, sir. No, sit down, not yet. I have to watch you properly. Um, he, he is a man who has been able to step into a very big shoe to carry the responsibility of the school as a body and all those involved. And he is extremely dogged about this initiative. And I'd like to say, sir, that you've entered one chance. You can't back out of this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Prince Bimba Olashere. Thank you very much, uh, Oscar. As a school proprietor, I got a phone call most school proprietors actually dread. You are quite aware that uh, when you have a school, you're actually in care of uh, young adults. We have a secondary school. And you understand the enormous responsibility that entails. So sometimes there's a phone calls you really don't want to get. The ones you prefer is the one that comes after exams and they tell you how well the school is doing. I got a phone call around 6 a.m. in the morning some few months back. Actually, I have just finished the early morning exercise and I saw the missed calls from the principal. And I wondered why would the principal be calling me at that time of the morning. So I called him back after 6 and he gave me the kind of news no parent wants to hear. And in particular, a local proprietor wants to hear that we've had an incident. And for the next, let's say, 48 hours, our world was turned upside down. Because the first thing you have to do when you get any incident is how do you contact people? How do you reach out to parents? How do you now, in the context of Nigeria, you now get to the next step, how do you manage the news? Because you start asking yourself, uh, we've done something wrong. Is there something we are doing that is right? Is there something we're doing that is wrong? And in that journey of dealing with that crisis, also, we also got very well educated as to the issue of mental illness and the fact that things do happen in society. And our reaction, first of all, is how do we uh, deal with this? First of all, from a school proprietor, this is not the kind of thing I want to be dealing with. So therefore, let's try and ensure that we don't have to go through this kind of uh, experience. And the only way is through education, awareness, and let everybody be aware. What we simply did, or uh, what I did first of all, was to call my sister. And I said, I think as a large international school, because for those 48 hours, we're all involved. Early morning, of course, I had to call her, call the PTA chairman, and I said, look, we all need to go and see a parent of the school because we have news that is not so good. After that experience, we now said, okay, how do we now try and educate uh, uh, people about this? And uh, the many things to call people that are close to you. So naturally, myself and my sister got together and said, okay, we need to have a seminar where we try and explain to parents, you get it, uh, first of all, do you know what's going on in the home? Also get the schools together. How do you also ensure that the experiences that we've had try and avoid it? What kind of policies? We are quite lucky. Um, we have a good set of policies, we have, we have counselors. So as a school, we are able to manage uh, the situation. Uh, touch wood, I think uh, we love to think the school has done better for that experience. Now, we now said, I think we need to hold a seminar and we need to call as many people involved. And we don't want it to be branded the uh, Olashere International School thing. But if we wanted to do that, all we had to do was do it in the school compound. We have a hall that can accommodate everybody. We said, no, 
it's not for all assured parents it's really for society at large naturally the first thing you do is to call your immediate uh, community those who are part and parcel that understand the brand and understand what we are trying to do and that's where my vote of thanks will actually start from those who first initially responded the mc comes at the compare oscar is an old boy of Olasho International School and I have a responsibility sometimes. You know, when you have an issue, the first thing you do is to call family. Huh? You call family. Family, come. We have work well, to do. And it's outside the family have responded and start calling others. So I must thank, first of all, the immediate Olasho International School family who immediately responded to the call to have this seminar. So that's Oscar, who was a compare. Dr. Laladari, a parent of the school, still very close to the school. The PTA executives led by Mr. Ogubo Fumi and the, and the parents on that board who immediately have the nucleus of the committee with my sister, my nephew, that all went to the school. I said, what do we need uh, to do? So a big thank you for all of you for responding. I wouldn't have expected anything less anyway. I think that's the way it's supposed to be. And the school management itself. Who took on the, uh, the challenge led by uh, uh, Mr. Derek Smith, Dr. Uh, Adia Medi School Doctor, uh, School Counselor, Mrs. Thomas, and I think everybody in the luxury community got well involved. Then we start moving to the external people. Okay, we want to do a seminar. What do you do? What do you do? Where do you hold it? And I must thank Lagos Business School for their response. I called the dean and I said, Look, I want to hold a seminar. And I need a hall that will accommodate everybody, also in a very safe uh, environment. Right there on the phone, she just said, oh, of course, we'll support you, whatever you want. Just give us the date you'd like, you like to do it. So a big thank you to Lagos Business School. I was on their ESCO board, so I do know what they can make out of this in terms of renting out the hall, but they give it to us uh, free of charge. And also have a commitment, uh, I think, you know, the message gets to her. And that people are, are you going to do this again? She's already committed to me that as long as we want to do this every year, Lagos Business School will be very glad to host this kind of initiative. <laughs> so it's a big thank you to Lagos uh, Business School for partnering uh, uh, with us uh, on this. Then we start moving out. A big thank you, Association of uh, International School Educators in Nigeria. Coincidentally, my principal is also the president of the association, so it made it very nice. They said, look, we want to do this, please, why don't you reach out to the schools? Is this something they too would like to partner with? Would they like to at least send representatives for the schools? Like we said, it's not for our parents. If the schools are not on board, what really is the point? So I really must thank their immediate response. And what the other, no, 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 schools will send representatives, they will broadcast it, and they will share it with everyone. So a big thank you to the association. And also to the association of private educators in Nigeria, I think there are two sides to it. They have those who are managing the school and also those who are actually who actually own the school, the proprietor. So a big thank you for your support in this initiative. Naturally, you now get to the issue of uh, publicity. How do we also spread out the word? So again, we must thank you. Plastic FM, Beat FM, free slots on the radio. They allowed us to come in. They hosted us for interviews for us just to put the message really out there. They are tied our jingles free of charge. No charge whatsoever. To the newspapers, Business Day, this day, Business Day was the first one they ran, they ran an advert. I think this day also ran one today. They interviewed us. So we had a lot of partners who joined us in trying to spread out the word. So a big thank you also to you for your help and what, on what you've done. Also to YWCA, my sister is also the president of the Lagos branch. They took it upon themselves to reach out to the doctors. And at the end of this program, you see uh, psychiatrists and doctors who are there for anybody that wants to have one-on-one -on -one sessions. And I think members of the panels, too, they're all there to interact with you. So thank you for supporting us and being a partner in that. And now to the panelists and our keynote speaker. You can put something together, but the question is, what are they coming to listen to? They don't want to listen to an advert by Olasho International School. They honestly don't want to listen to any school talking about it. It's really who are the experts. And one name kept on turning up. In all our designs, who's going to be the keynote speaker? Who's going to give the welcome address? Who's going to be, I don't know who's going to be the chairman. But one name kept on turning up. Everywhere you go to, the first thing they tell you is, ah, there's only one person. Do you know Dr. Mamuna Kadri? I'm also honest, unknown to me. 
but a recurring name. And I was so pleased when my sister called and said, Ah, I've spoken to her. She has agreed to be the keynote speaker. So that box was ticked. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mo. Now we know each other. And the interesting thing about when you have issues that happen, all of a sudden names start popping up. Since that day when I got your name, I've been seeing your name everywhere. <laughs> I now start getting invitations to come to programs like this, and the first thing I say, keynote speaker. At one time I was getting worried. I said, nah, she's giving too many speeches, so nobody's going to come to our program because she's really uh, out there. So I really must thank you. Really, you could see the passion from the way she spoke, uh, understanding and the depth of uh, knowledge. So thank you very much for being a keynote speaker. And also being on the panel, Dr. Ugo. I'll call Joker Joker Cooker. We go back a long way. Uh, I'm not going to show you, you just flew in just for this. I was trying to manage her. She was not in the country. I kept saying, Are you sure you'll be able to make it? And she said, Oh, yes, that I'll be there. Dr. Ibibami, very self getting great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You see, the different perspectives you all brought is quite useful to this. It's not just hearing the theory of those who are experts. So hearing the real life experiences. Obviously, I must thank one of us, uh, Father Shadi Thomas, who also give you own passion from what we see in the school. At the end of the day, it's always an appeal to parents. It's all a partnership. It's not just the school on its own. It's really about parents, teachers, and the students, and everybody in the ecosystem working together in making sure that everything is as successful as, as, as you would like it to be. So mine is to thank everybody for making it for today's program. I think uh, we have been corralled. I think with that uh, comment, really, uh, by uh, Dr. Gosaya, I think it's really upon us. There must be some standardized policies that, irrespective of the school you go to, people should be rest assured that there are some policies that are in place that will guide. I can say that is something that we need to take on. And we also have to commit. Uh, I always said it's not an unnatural thing. And I really will put it down to the Association of International Schools and also to the owners. It's really for you to run with this. And everybody should be behind you. Do you get it? Because we are all in this uh, together. I think with the commitment of uh, LBS, I think we have rest assured that there must be a follow up uh, to what we just had uh, today. So clearly, obviously, we'll clearly be very much involved. And I think at this note is to thank now everybody on this hall, the audience. The issue was how do we go about this? Uh, yes, we can advertise, but we said, look, at the end of the day, let us try and make it an event that people should register for. First of all, we, want, we didn't want to do a program where you just try and put it out there and you are never sure who's going, who's going to turn up. So we want to be sure that clearly there must be what? A demand for this kind of what? A program. We might sit down and say, yes, we want to run something. But clearly, what if the others say this is not what they want to listen? Immediately we put up uh, the, uh, the website and registration. Right from the one where the situation started coming in. By the end, I think by, by the end of the first two days, we've never started the radio thing. We had got, when I, we had got like 78 people that are registered. And I went, ah, are you sure we'll have a hall that will take uh, everybody? The response was immense. All of a sudden, people started calling, ah, I want to be part of this, I want to be part of this. I think it's something that is useful. And I really must thank the audience, first of all, for being here with us for believing and for supporting the initiative. Like I said, if you are not here and the audience is not here to participate, what will be the point of this? We'll be talking more to ourselves. We've had to do lots of research. We've had to spend more time. So we can say we have been fairly well uh, educated and the awareness level is high. But the key is how do we get others? So I must thank you all for coming. And again, we must thank Almighty God today. Lovely weather. The last two or three days has been raining very early in the morning. All of a sudden, this morning appears to be very dry. So he's also telling us that uh, waking up in the morning, you have no excuse not to say, I'll do the drive to Aja. So I thank you for coming out here. Initially, there was a response, why are you going all the way out to Aja? I said, don't worry, when you get to the environment, you understand what we believe we should have it here in Lagos Business School. So to so thank everyone uh, for coming. And also to reiterate, the conversation continues. As soon as you step out into the hall at the back there, the experts are there. So just seek out anybody that you need to talk to so you can get more communication. There was a question about where do you get leaflets. I think every, all the panelists are all here. They have uh, leaflets about their organizations and they also have more information. So everybody can quietly go out there and uh, get as much information as one. Well. So, so thank you very much for coming and let the conversation continue. Thank you very much.